I've talked at some length about how important connection is to everything in the world. It's the foundation of what we would call society, getting together, getting to know each other. But of course, a connection is critical to an economy. The economy is the foundation of how we interact with each other, especially across long distances. And I often say that economics is nothing more than sociology with a way of keeping score. The problem being that we emphasize the score more than the uh, sociology. So how do we get back to the sociology? How do we get back to understanding it? Well, it's really all about the connection and the rate at which we have new connections between things. And all economic theory, all political theory these days is basically economic theory. So this really is what our politics is all about, is how we connect with each other, how we interact, how we relate. And it might seem a little strange to go straight to technology, but technology is what drives change in our world, possibly disruptive change. Now, we've had a disruptive change that is not technology-based, a major disconnection in our world because of the virus. As a temporary event, it is certainly going to limit our ability to connect. There's no question about it, and it may have long-term effects. But really, technology itself is caused by the connection of bits and pieces sitting around waiting for somebody, really anybody, to put them together and create something new. And this is what I want to elaborate on because I believe that there is a need for a fundamental understanding of connection itself in our world. Now, my proposal is partially baked at best, but I think it's important to get started. Since uh, the, con the way we connect with each other is critical to the foundation of everything, I call it syndesics, which is to say the body of uh, knowledge and practice related to connection. You've got to come up with a term of some kind. But the idea is, is that if we start understanding connection, we can understand the uh, rate of change in the rate of change itself, the acceleration of our world, going to the second order. Technology is the rate of change. We can understand how technology affects us better. Now, developing a framework for this is difficult. For one thing, we have connections uh, that just exist, and we have also you know, a quantity of them, but we also need to measure the quality of them. And that becomes much more difficult. I mean, say you, say you go to a bar and you meet somebody new. We become friends. Your life is better for that. That's wonderful. That's great. Now let's say that that person is somebody from a different uh, social class, a different uh, ethnicity, a, a different culture, a different skin color, and you have a really deep, long conversation, which I strongly recommend doing. I don't think there's anything wrong with this planet that can't be solved by everybody just sitting down and actually listening to each other. Okay, that aside, you can change your life if the quality of that new connection is extremely high. So there is a difference between pure quantity and quality. Hard to get to understand, but that is what we, uh, the nature of change itself. So the principle is that by understanding connection and developing a body of thought that uh, can be put into practice and has use, that we can understand not just the rate of change, but the rate of change of the rate of change, the acceleration in our lives. I would propose that there are three basic things that can be connected uh, that really make a difference in people's lives. These are basically ideas. Ideas that can be separated into different categories, and they are facts, verifiable facts about our planet. It is round. It has a gravitational acceleration, etc., or facts about our world, etc. Things that can be verified through a scientific method to a high degree of accuracy. There are also processes or skills, ways of doing things, ways of working, ways of living, uh, ways of getting things done, which may or may not be more efficient. 
And the third thing is, is that there are uh, perspectives, uh, angles of looking at things, angles of seeing the things, so that the, the whole itself, which is connected, has a different view from one angle or another. These three different sets of ideologies can be connected in six different ways. It's kind of a round robin and all that. If you connect facts to facts, you might set up a new discipline, a new uh, ology, as it were. Epidemiology, for example, is a connection between medicine and sociology, with a whole lot of math, uh, that didn't exist 100 years ago. Our world is currently much better off because of our understanding of epidemiology. But it took connecting those things together. If you connect facts to a new process, you might have an invention. For example, how Tesla might uh, use the magnetic properties of wire to change how things are wound up and make a new motor, which they did, uh, a new way of making motors. Uh, connecting facts to a process re which renders them to practice is an invention. Connecting a, f a new fact to a perspective might sh create a new model, a new way of looking at the world which makes predictions uh, that can be verified. And connecting a, a, uh, uh, a process to a process or a, a, a one way of doing things to another way of doing things can improve it and create a new technology. Uh, connecting a process to a perspective can produce a new product. For example, something that is a, a way of putting things together finds a new use. It's a whole new product area. And finally, we have connecting perspectives to perspectives themselves, creating new philosophies, new ideologies, new isms. Six different things. My contention is, is that any new change can be evaluated with respect to how, which of these six things it creates in and of itself. A truly disruptive change is going to hit many of these and is going to enable additional change later on. This is how we get to the acceleration of it. And from, okay, from each of these potential changes that could take place, there's kind of an order of magnitude difference. What exactly? We don't know. But something that hits all six, like major internet development, is incredibly disruptive. It's going to be an order of magnitude more disruptive than something that only hits five. Uh, remote work doesn't really change the way facts are connected to facts in the, in the world, but it does change the way processes operate. And it does change perspectives because we're going to be uh, working closely with people all around the world. So remote work you know, could be a three or a four. Uh, a really killer app that you know connects people, like a, you know a TikTok kind of thing. It's not going to change the way facts are connected to facts, but it, it could change perspectives and all that. A good killer app might be a one or a two. It's not you know not as important. Containerized cargo. The development of that by Malcolm McLean in the 1950s, something I might want to talk about. Something that's underappreciated, but it definitely changed the way a whole lot of things were done. It's a solid four, maybe a five, uh, because it changes the way processes can operate if shipping can be done all around the world and processes can be connected to processes to develop a supply chain. Very important uh, concept. The main point, however, is that by evaluating connection, we are looking at a derivative of change itself. And we are looking at the rate of change in society, economy, and in technology. They are all closely interrelated, and they always have been, if you take the broadest definition of technology. Uh, technology, again, is nothing more than what tech, techne means skill, the study of skill, the process of developing skill. Development of agriculture as a skill was the sort of the primary technology, and from there it's just taken off. So understanding the, connect, the rate of connection itself, I call it syndesics, the body and, of, of knowledge and practice for understanding connection. 
I believe it's something that really needs to be developed. And I'm talking to you today because I have just my own simple foundation for it. And I'd like to hear what you think. I'd like to hear if this is valuable and how we might proceed, how we might understand both the quantity and the quality of connections that are made. Because I think this is really critical to understanding where we are going as a people. And more importantly, how we can master the rate of change, master the technology, so that the, the uh, good side, like how it improves our lives, can be emphasized, and the downside, like how it puts people out of work, uh, can be minimized. And we really go in with a clear mind, understanding what we're doing. Thank you.